Douglas Cooling and Heating. Serving the Birmingham area for 38 years. 988-3706. That's Douglas. It's the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday evening, the 9th of January. James Spann here. Uh, unsettled weather through midweek, much colder later in the week, little model madness mixed in, so a lot to talk about. Let's get in there and see if we can answer all of your questions. We'll start with the Skycam shots around the network today. First off, the view coming from Gadsden, Alabama. Off in the distance, you can see uh, Chandler Mountain. Sky is cloudy. Pretty much the same view coming from Cheehaw State Park, south of Anniston. That's looking west from the uh, restaurant there. What a gorgeous vantage point that is. And down in Shelby County, that's our sky cam on the campus of the University of Montevallo. Pretty much the same sky. Deep upper low over West Texas, producing a lot of issues. Snow and uh, icy winter weather underneath that thing. And uh, storms in the warm sector. Houston had some big flooding issues this morning. Major problems there. And down below that, the uh, surface low is near Houston. The front is over the Tennessee Valley. It's been slowly lifting northward this morning. And uh, obviously, with that set up there, it's going to rain on us. And it's going to be mild at least for a few more days. Uh, those are temperatures early this afternoon. Look at Montgomery at 72. Mostly mid-60s up this way. The uh, average high today is 52, so we're way above that. But around the nation, much colder back in the west. Look at the cold air diving down into western Texas where snow is falling. Around the Permian Basin. But around here, we're nice and mild. Ooh, boy, that's messy. That's the uh, Lake Charles radar at 113, just pouring around Beaumont, Port Arthur, Lake Charles. Uh, still raining at Houston, Galveston, and a lot of flash flooding issues around Houston this morning. And while it's moving down I-10, and, of course, we got all the BCS fans in New Orleans for that game tonight. And uh, uh, from the looks of things, it might start raining uh, before the game starts. So for fans that are walking, you might want to take some rain gear, and especially on the way out of there, it should be raining. And there might be some severe weather as well. Uh, there's the watch warning map around the nation. Flash flood warnings around Houston. A flash flood watch around the Arklatex. Winter storm warnings. Midland and Odessa, Texas getting heavy snow this morning. And a winter weather advisory way up north. All right, convective outlooks. This is today. Day one, slight risk of severe weather on the northwest Gulf Coast. Uh, basically the upper Texas coast and southwest Louisiana. And that's it. Nothing inland. And that area moves east tomorrow. Uh, the standard slight risk includes southwest Alabama, basically from near Butler to Monroeville to Atmore and points south. Mobile and Baldwin counties, of course, involved in that. Pensacola, Florida, south Mississippi, south of I-20, and southeast Louisiana. The northern half of the state is not in a formal risk. And on day three, just the uh, low-end probabilities to the uh, east of here. Rain for the next five days. Got to get wet. It's been wet. Uh, this is through Saturday morning at 6 o'clock, showing rain amounts of 1 to 2 inches here. And I do believe that and will certainly happen. All right, model fans, let's take a look. This is the 12Z GFS at noon tomorrow at 500 millibars. Strong upper low east of Dallas-Fort Worth. Northern branch up on the Canadian border. Down below that, we've got this uh, uh, massive rain and storms beginning to push in here. Uh, this run may be a tad faster, suggesting the organized rain and storms could be here tomorrow afternoon. I think that's consistent with radar trends for sure. Uh, tomorrow night at midnight, surface low, 1,004 millibars below Memphis. Could be kind of stormy at that point. And then uh, we'll go to Wednesday at noon. Upper feature is onto the east, and down below that, the bulk of the heavy storms onto the east. All right, let's check the RPM, the Rapid Precision Mesoscale Model. This is midnight tomorrow night. And it's uh, got, I say midnight, It's I take it back, it's 07Z. This is 1 a.m., just after midnight tomorrow night. And it's got uh, the look of some strong convection pretty much along I-65. And then by midday Wednesday, it's all gone. So it seems like the prime window for severe weather would be tomorrow night. We'll check some of the uh, parameters. This is the surface-based cape off the RPM at midnight tomorrow night. And it's got a little bit, but, you know, it's generally 500 joules or less. Uh, other models don't even show that much. But obviously, there's a little axis of instability tomorrow night. And the shear, very impressive. This is midnight. This is the 0 to 3 kilometer helicity. And there's a lot of veering of the wind with altitude for organized and sustained updrafts and 
by golly, I bet you we'll probably see a few showers trying to rotate, but again, the lack of instability is the main issue. It's a high shear, low cape event, and we see these a lot in the cold weather season. But you can get a tornado from these. Obviously, the better chance is down south across southwest Alabama where the slight risk is up, but we have to watch the radar trends up here. In the bottom line, not a major severe weather problem, but there might be an isolated severe storm or a, a rotator in there somewhere tomorrow night. All right, let's go to Thursday. Here comes some cold air knocking on the door. That Arctic boundary, it might kick off a shower, but there's not much moisture left, so I don't think that'll be a big deal. And then Friday, you know, here's the deal. All right, the GFS doesn't develop this big long wave full latitude trough it's got the thing progressive moving north of us it's got this upper low that's uh, on the other side of baja and that'll be a big player later as you'll see on this run but down below that friday would just be kind of cool and dry highs in the mid 40s yeah much colder but uh, not as cold as it could be but let's look at the european friday yeah look at the 540 line all the way down to mobile this is valid at uh, friday evening at six o'clock if the european is right the high friday would be about 38 here if the gfs is right the high would be about 45 and you know what i'm about to say let's trust the european it's been so much better i think a high close to 40 is in order and don't be shocked if it trends a degree or two lower all right, now Saturday, back to the GFS, starting off the weekend. We're dry and seasonal, highs in the 50s, but look at that mess coming at us over Texas. And Sunday, we go wet. I mean really wet. Uh, not enough cold air for snow. But if this is right, Sunday would offer a soaking rain event. We'll be in the 40s probably all day. But hang on. Look at the Europeans. Same time frame. Noon, Sunday. Nothing. I mean, you talk about mottled madness you got the GFS with this cold, soaking rain, the European with a sunny, cool day. Who do you believe? Well, let's side with the Euro. We're going to leave it dry this weekend. be interesting to see the battle of the models, who wins this thing. And then Monday of next week, look at the GFS. You know, it's still got this surface low deepening east of here, and it's got the rain changing to snow up in northwest Alabama. But again, for now, we think that is bogus. The GFS has not done well this season in the medium range. And if you want to get excited about cold air, come on now, look at here. This is the 23rd of January, a big cold air flush for the east. Down below that, cold air advection. Woo, that looks cold. Big old snow event for the uh, eastern cities, uh, Washington and Baltimore and New York City and Boston. But come on now, that's all voodoo. But look, on the 25th, it's gone. I'm telling you that, you know, any kind of... Cold pops will be quick hitting. And you know the deal. We've showed you this a lot. The Arctic Oscillation there trends negative by mid-month, which should allow the cold air to drop into the lower 48, but the NAO kind of stays neutral to positive, which means any cold shot will probably be short-lived. Until that spike's neutral, it's going to be hard, or negative, it's going to be hard to get a long-lasting cold snap in here. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And if you live around here, hey, join us on the TV side, ABC 3340 News in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless.